When I was just starting in the Emery console coal mine, I was a red hat, being one of those who could not be left alone or put in the mine by himself. To get the coal out of the seam, they dug five tunnels into the coal seam and labeled them one through five. Tunnels one and two brought in clean air from outside and across the face, where they were using the continuous miner to cut the coal seam into little chunks. Picture a crab with a horizontal cylinder on the front with spikes that tore up the coal when it spun rolled around. Tunnels four and five took the bad air from the face to back outside the mine. The middle tunnel hash three was neutral air and held the belt line that dumped the coal from the shuttle car onto the belt till it hit a corner where the coal was dumped onto another belt till it was eventually dumped outside in a large pile. Between the tunnels, they cut cross-cut tunnels into each of the tunnels, then closed off the cross-cuts surrounding Tunnel 3, so the air would move down and around. Every fourth cross-cut had a small door in the stoppage walls, so you could move laterally from tunnel to tunnel as needed. One day I was told that one of the belt lines had shut down, and the other belt had filled the junction with coal that needed to be shoveled back onto the belt. I stood there trying to figure it out for some time, then decided I should not be there by myself. I walked down to the mine phone and called the section, saying that there was no water down there and could I come up and get some. They said sure come up and get some. I walked rather fast to the section break area and sat down. They had built a small kitchen break area to eat lunch in. One of the guys handed me a case of water bags and said to go back to work. I said no. The section boss was sitting there and was pretty insistent that I go back to the belt area and go back to work. I told him no. He called the shift boss who said I was to be fired and to keep me there. The guys from the section tried to persuade me to go back to work. I said no. The shift super was on his way. The section boss asked why I would not go back. I told him to go down and look the situation over and then decide if I needed to be down there by myself. He left and came back directly sitting next to me, drinking several bags of water before he could speak. About that time, the shift super came to the section and told me to get on the tractor he was taking me out of the mine. The section boss told him to wait up and asked him to follow him down the belt line as I sat on the tractor. The guys in the section were again trying to get me to just go back down and go to work so I would not be fired. After about 15 minutes, both came back and asked me if I saw him. I said no, but he was just around the corner from me, and I thought it was one of the guys from the section trying to play a joke on me. I told him what happened, just as it happened leaving nothing out. The whole section was there to hear it in silence. The super said the belt junction was shoveled out well enough and that I was to stay with the section and help out as needed. I was not in trouble nor going to be fired. I reluctantly got off the tractor. The super turned to the rest of the section and said, be careful Reese is out and about. This shocked the crew. I being new did not know what that meant. After the super left the section, boss said to help tend cables of the continuous miner so the miner would not run over them for the rest of the shift. Pretty easy work. Once back outside after the shift, I had several visitors. The foreman of the whole mine came by to ask questions and show him on a map where the incident occurred. Several old hands that walked the mine sampling the air a different location, called fire bosses, also came by to chat. I still could not figure out what was going on. Finally, one of the fire bosses came up after everyone had left and pulled me aside and told me what was happening. I thought I was still in trouble. In the mid-40s, the mine was being operated by a small crew mining mostly by hand. They had imported one of the first continuous miners in the state. For lunch, they would go out to the entrance portal and sit down and make a fire and eat lunch. One windy day, the fire got out of hand and started the mine on fire. It took two weeks along with a company of National Guard soldiers helping to get the fire under control. The continuous miner was still in the mine, and they were going to blow up the entry portal to seal the air from getting into the mine and extinguish the fire. Al Risi and another guy volunteered to go into the mine and hook chains to the equipment so they could pull it out of the mine and not lose thousands of dollars when they collapsed the tunnel. The two went into the mine and hooked up the chains. The folks at the portal pulled out the equipment to find the other volunteer sitting on the miner, dead. Oxygen that had burned off in the mine. Al's body was never recovered. From time to time, he shows up mostly down by the old works. He wears leather logging boots instead of the steel toe rubber boots issued to miners at the time. He uses a carbide light on his hard hat that flickers instead of the battery-equipped one miner use nowadays. <laughs>